All right, welcome to Gamers Station. Today, we're gonna to be checking out Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, this is a big release that's sort of gotten people some mixed reviews, but generally good ones. But I wanna talk about this from a certain perspective, especially one from someone who's never played Dragon Age before, because this is uh, one of the sequels and additions to the Dragon Age universe, and uh, not everyone has played Dragon Age before. So I wanna talk about this game like that. So it is available on the PC, it's on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and previous gen consoles, so it's quite available out there. I would recommend playing it on the current gen consoles or the PC though. So I got the PlayStation 4 version and it feels pretty good, but let me tell you the plot of the game first, right? Because it's got um, an interesting plot, but uh, I have some comments on that. So basically you get to create your character, you can choose male, female, all sorts of races, and the first time you get to choose this weird looking demonish Kunari race, which is quite interesting to play and you get a choice of classes and stuff like that and the story is that you were at some sort of council meeting and something blew up and everyone died and uh, basically you're the only one who survived so uh, you're naturally to blame uh, but then there's this big breach in the sky which is sort of releasing demons onto the world and you have to close it and apparently you're the only one who can do it so on the one hand people want to kill you on the other hand you're kind of the only person who can save the world which is an interesting dichotomy. And that's sort of what Dragon Age Inquisition really is. It's sort of this splitting of opinions, a splitting of worlds, splitting of everything, and you have to kind of figure out how to put it all back together again. The man that tells the tale is the one who decides history. He tells it wrong, and you have nothing more than a pretty story. So let's talk about the game. So right off the bat, the game does actually feel pretty good. Combat feels good and the character creation is nice, really well customizable. You can create your character in any way you like and you can also customize all the features like elongating the nose. So you can really create the kind of character you want to be the hero. Now that might be something you like or not. Sometimes you might want a set character. Sometimes you want to make your own. But anyway, moving on to the combat. The combat is very interesting. So there is the real-time combat and they sort of designed it in a way where you're not really button mashing. You can just sort of hold down a button and it keeps attacking. So it feels very much like an MMORPG sort of combat system. But the addition on top of it is the tactical view. So you push a button and it sort of zooms out, it pauses the game, and you have this top-down view where you can command your characters to move them around more specifically because you're not just controlling yourself, you're controlling a team of like four people. So you might want the rogue to sneak around the back and do a backstab and the archer to you know, get up to high ground and start shooting from the top. So you have this tactical view, though in terms of controls, in terms of playing the game, at the start, definitely, it feels very, very clunky because even just moving around the world, the jumping feels a little unresponsive and also the tactical view is hard to control if you're not used to it. But over time, you pick it up and it gets a bit more uh, easy to control. Now, um, the game looks great, and but how about some bad points? Okay, so the plot, I would say, is sort of the weakest point of the game. So. You might think that's kind of important, but the game is actually fun enough by itself. But the plot itself, it starts out a little bit weak. I mean, you're sort of this prisoner, this council has exploded, and it sounds like all the interesting people died in the explosion, really, uh, and you never get to see them. So you sort of start out with the, these really interesting people that everyone's talking about already dead, and you don't even see what happened. And uh, you sort of start out with these you know, ragtag bunch of characters, which they do have their banter, but it does take a while for you to really connect with them. I mean, it, you don't really connect with the characters in the game so quickly. And also, it's, uh, it's not as engaging in terms of the plot, really. But where the game does excel is this whole dichotomy, as I mentioned before, of the political system. So it's sort of like the main religious system of the world has gone on one side because their leader died. And you are sort of this inquisition. You have taken charge without anyone's permission and you're to restore balance and order to the world. 
but the Inquisition has a bad reputation for killing people as well. So the religious people are on one side and the Inquisition's on one side and the game is not just about exploring the world and doing quests, but it's also this tactical political game where you go to the world map and you have to sort of explore areas, gain power, gain influence, take control of things, set up bases and all of that sort of stuff. And that's really, really cool and I like that about the game. So it's not just an RPG, it's kind of a strategy as well. So that's really a strong point. Might want to watch yourself. Raining demons out here. So, is Dragon Age Inquisition for you? Well, it's really an expansive game. So just to put it in context, the main story is going to take you about 45 hours to complete. If you really like doing all the side quests and completing everything, it's going to take you to 90 to maybe even 120 hours to complete this game. So there's a lot of content. It is a feature-rich game with tons and tons of side quests and tons of content to go through. Um, so, but if you're not a fan of the Dragon Age series and you're sort of new to it and you don't really know what Dragon Age is, I wouldn't worry. The game is fine as a standalone. But if you're looking for like a really, really deep story with great voice acting and that sort of cinematic experience, then maybe it's a little weak in those parts. But the gameplay might be able to excuse it because the combat feels nice. The tactical combat, of course, is an optional one, but adding on that strategy is great. And the whole sort of setting of that political dichotomy is a nice, nice setting to work with. So overall, I would say it's a definitely great buy. Um, but you better check it out first just to make sure it's the kind of game you're looking for, especially because the whole game sort of feels MMO-ish. So if you're not into MMOs, you might not like this one. Survival, honor, glory. But what about those who feel it's their duty to protect the innocent? Their humanity. Ooh, end of another episode and I am um happy because I get to start playing some new toys in preparation for next week. So in the meantime, find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. We would absolutely love to hear from you. Thanks once again to where we are, beautiful location, Cat in the Box in Empire City, Damansara Padana. My name is Adam Carruthers and we'll see you next time.